Today we're going to be talking about euphoria. Actually, one sec. Today we're going to be talking about euphoria. I swear this looks way more intense in person. Oh, look, even the nails are euphoria ready. Let's do it. Hi, I'm Jess. Welcome. In this video, we are going to be talking about the opening sequence in season two, episode four of Euphoria. So stop right now if you aren't caught up with the series because there's going to be spoilers, but I'm also never going to say no to views. So the episode kicks off with a dreamlike sequence with so many pop culture references, but also art historical references. And if you guys know me or know my channel, you know I am dying. Actually, no, I am living. I'm like high from all of the art that I just saw. So I hope you hang out with me because I'm going to talk about all those references and what they mean. And I'll be mostly focusing on the paintings because that's what I'm good at and know the most about. But I'm also going to be talking about the other references because they hold a lot of meaning as well and I have a lot of thoughts. It all begins with an homage to The Birth of Venus by Sandro Botticelli, created sometime around 1485. This painting depicts a mythological scene of Venus and her birth. This painting is iconic. When I think of the Italian Renaissance, I think of this painting. When I think of famous art, I think of this painting. This has shown up all over pop culture, mostly Lady Gaga. This painting has been the source of inspiration and conversation for other artists. It has inspired everything from advertisements to makeup. And of course, the Urban Outfitters graphic tee. So by the way, the Urban Outfitters test is like my ride or die. I use it all the time. It's honestly my favorite form of precise scientific measurement to determine whether an image or artwork is that ubiquitous or that big of a part of pop culture. <laughs> Just search the title of a painting or a theme that you've been seeing followed by the words Urban Outfitters and there you go, there's your answer. Anyway, The Birth of Venus. It's iconic. So a little bit about this work. Like I said earlier, it depicts a scene from classical mythology about the origins of Venus. Venus is the goddess of love, sexual desire, fertility, prosperity, beauty, and sometimes success in battle. I don't know, she does it all. You might also recognize her Greek name, Aphrodite. Actually, Venus was based off of Aphrodite and was blended into Roman mythology. In the myth, Venus, Aphrodite was born of sea foam as like a grown adult though. So she skipped all of her awkward phases. <laughs> and we see her in this giant scallop shell and the idea is that she is the pearl, just like beautiful and perfect. At the left, we have these two magical beings blowing Venus to shore. How nice of them. Obviously she's not gonna swim or row her shell like a giant kayak. And then on the right side, we have this woman waiting for Venus on land and she is wearing the most glorious, floral, billowy springtime fit. Like cottagecore fans rejoice. And she's holding this really cool looking cloak or dress. Like she's picked out Venus's outfit for her arrival. And I think she's supposed to be one of the goddesses of spring. The artist, Sandro Botticelli. He didn't focus on creating a really realistic or natural looking scene. Like the background looks pretty flat. Like to me, it reminds me of the backdrop of a stage. And I think this is the perfect parallel for the way Euphoria is shot actually. At times it really does feel like a play or stage production. Like the camera will travel through the different sets and sometimes we'll get like that overhead shot where you could see into the different rooms of a house, like breaking the illusion that we're part of this real world. Or often the characters will be placed in unrealistic settings, maybe a spotlight on them. And especially now with Lexi, with the play that she's putting together in real life, but also that's going on in her head. I love Lexi. I think it makes sense that they started off this pop culture collage sequence with this painting. It really sets the tone for how Rue sees Jules. I love how in this interpretation, Jules is partially submerged in water. And then you have this stream coming into the left, hinting at that same movement that we get in the painting. She's in the same pose, has the flowy hair. It's just all so good. 
Jules is perfect in Rue's eyes. Even if Rue can't necessarily show how much she adores her or can't fully be present because her drug use is numbing her feelings, quite literally. This next scene was inspired by one of the most famous photographs of all time, shot for Rolling Stone, John Lennon and Yoko Ono by Annie Leibovitz. What is absolutely insane about this is just hours after this photo was taken, John Lennon was shot and killed outside of his apartment, the Dakota in New York. So what was captured here might have been their final kiss. I think this is another great art piece to pull inspiration from. The themes of love and heartbreak and loss are all tied together in one work. Rue is in Yoko Ono's pose and she is fully clothed, which I think makes a lot of sense for her character. Like I'm even thinking back to just episode one where she goes on that super intense drug deal with Fez and she is is super reluctant to take off her clothes even though her life is on the line. And then we have Jules in John Lennon's pose who is kissing and holding Rue. I think Rue's mind imagines this image because she probably longs for this type of safe space that Jules provides and an unconditional love. And on to the next scene. This is based off of a painting by Rene Magritte called The Lovers, created in 1928. By the way, this reminds me, I recommend this super crazy, insane video about the art in Squid Game and how the front man had a thing for Rene Magritte and other famous artists. Like it's a must see if you've seen Squid Game. Click here after my video. And yes, maybe it also happens to be my video. In the painting, we see a couple kissing or attempting to kiss, but they are blocked by these sheets of fabric over their heads. It's a pretty creepy visual, especially considering the title, The Lovers. Like it's a very unsettling contrast. I don't like it. He was a surrealist artist and he often juxtaposed everyday scenes or people with impossible situations, like things that couldn't happen in real life. And so it really gets you to question your own perception of reality. And again, Euphoria directors, writers, producers, cinematographers, honestly, like I don't know who to give a shout out to because so many different people work on a show. But whoever's picking up these paintings is absolutely crushing it. Like, can we work together? Like creative directing for film or a musician is low key like a dream job of mine. So I'm just gonna put it out there. We're manifesting it. <laughs> About that last thing I said about Magritte and getting us to question our reality, I feel like Euphoria does that all the time. Like we see what's going on in a character's head versus what's going on in real life, but then sometimes that line is blurred and it's up to us to figure out what's going on. Like despite the fact these two are lovers, they don't see each other. There's a clear barrier between them and that's how I see Rue and Jules right now. And there are too many secrets, it's stressing me out. It also feels very love is blind because I think these characters both know that they probably aren't the greatest for each other, but the heart wants what the heart wants. Okay, next up we have Jules as Frida Kahlo. And she's one of my all time favorite artists, so I was really excited to see this. This is based on self portrait as a Tehuana, finished in 1943 by Frida Kahlo, if I didn't make that clear. The scene is done so well, it feels so vibrant and magical and surreal, and I think of all those things and I think of Frida Kahlo. So, for the original painting, it's a self portrait, which Kahlo is definitely known for. On her head, we have this elaborate floral headpiece that looks like it's made up of natural elements elements like roots or leaves or vines and it looks like a web and her head is just stuck in the center and now I'm thinking about spiders and I'm stressed out and then on Kala's forehead we have a man's face and that is Diego Rivera who was her husband and a famous artist as well. Kala started this painting during a pretty tumultuous time with her husband Rivera. I mean their entire marriage was kind of tumultuous and not the most conventional. They got divorced, they got back together, they both had affairs. Um, Rivera even had an affair with Kahlo's sister. Like, Rivera was known for being a womanizer and despite all of this, Kahlo still loved him unconditionally and saw him as her source of creativity. So his face on her forehead literally represents the fact that he is just constantly on her mind. Like her very stationary pose and this web around her, like she is stuck 
and she is stuck thinking about Rivera and she probably wants to also pull Rivera back in and like get him stuck there with her forever. I don't know. This whole composition feels a little claustrophobic to me, but it's also really interesting to look at and kind of beautiful and conveys so much emotion. Oh yeah, and back to her clothing, she's wearing that specifically because Rivera was a big fan of that type of clothing. So it's just another way of being like, please come back, like look, I'm wearing your favorite thing. So back in the Euphoria version, at first I thought it made more sense with the character's roles switched. But then I changed my mind because this is from Rue's perspective. Like this is her fantasy. Like of course you want to imagine that the person you love is always thinking about you. Okay guys, I am just going to admit it right now. I have not seen this movie. I know, I know, I'm sorry. I wasn't born yet, but even though I haven't seen the movie, I still knew that this was the pottery scene between Demi Moore and Patrick Swayze from Ghost. They're clearly so passionately in love here. It's like they're in their honeymoon phase, but sadly, we know what happens in the end. Do I even need to explain this one? This is the scene from Titanic. It's like the only one that you need to know. Well, there is that other one, but we have Leo DiCaprio holding Kate Winslet and she's like, I'm flying. This is Rue's desire to protect and support Jules, to make her feel invincible, to show her the world. Can we talk about the rules on the side of this? Like so good. And the note at the beginning, I love it. So I forgot to film this at the time because I guess my brain just thought it was so obvious, but this was based on Snow White. I mean, those blue and red puff sleeves, dead giveaway. And here, Rue sees herself as the hero, saving Jules and giving her that fairy tale ending. This one, this is from Brokeback Mountain. References a scene between Heath Ledger and Jake Gyllenhaal. And I see this as reinforcing the idea of how intense their love is for each other, but also hints at the fact that they're not totally aligned or totally ready for this relationship, or that they may start to feel some societal pressure or norms. Oh my God, I just realized something. Almost every couple shown in this opening sequence either can't be together or ends tragically. I said almost every couple. It's a Disney movie. They're gonna do the whole happily ever after thing. Wait, actually no, I would argue that the animated nature of Snow White just reinforces the idea that this happily ever after can only happen in a fairy tale. Unfortunately, I do think that all of these are working together to foreshadow the character's future and the fact that they can't be together at least right now. And they're just like hurting themselves. So just for fun, if it were up to me, a few other paintings I would have added to this opening sequence would have been Embracing by Ibrahim Hussein. This work came to mind for me because of the mesmerizing, but also kind of dizzying, fast paced visual I get from it. Like it feels like a whirlwind romance and that's how I feel about Jules and Rue. I love the intensity of the embrace, but what I love the most are these little like zaps of color coming off of the couple. Like they're sparks. Like we're seeing a visual representation of that feeling when you hold someone and it gives me optimistic feelings for the future for them. Another painting that I thought would fit well in this opening sequence would have been the Kiss by Gustav Klimt. And I know, I know, I know, a little cliche, but like, hear me out because I truly think this works really well. And yes, I wanna see a set full of gold foil ornamentation and some like gold like body paint. Like, I want the whole thing. Like we have these two lovers kissing on a ledge. It shows so much intensity in this love, but also the fact that they're kind of losing themselves and they're losing their individuality because they're just kind of melded together as like a, like a one blob, like a really artsy blob, but like a blob. And the closer they get, I feel like the more they're at risk of falling over the edge. For my vision of this, 
Spirit fingers, I feel like, come out at least once per video. But I feel like I need Rue being the one doing, like, the holding and the kissing because right now Rue is the one more desperately holding on. And meanwhile, Jules, as the character, you know, closest to the edge, I do feel like she's being, like, overwhelmed. And then I would love to sum up this entire montage opening sequence with this one. Let's just call it The Swan. It is by Hilma of Clint. And yes, it probably would have to be a little bit more abstract in its execution, but I'd also love to see a Bjork swan dress moment for the two of them. So I really like this painting for rules because I feel like it does a great job of demonstrating that while they're very similar in certain ways, they're also very much the opposite of each other. I feel like it hints at the duality within their own personalities and the different sides they have in their nature that they aren't like fully bringing to the surface. And now I wanna hear what you think. Like what is Rue and Jules going to do next? Actually, maybe the real question is, what is Cassie going to do next? Is it Sunday yet? <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and watching this video and I hope it was fun. I hope it was interesting and you know what? I think I'm going to keep these rhinestones on the rest of the day. I'll see you guys really, really soon. Bye.